We're coming to you from county number 37, that's the county of Kakamega in our continuing coverage of women in enterprise. This week we bring you the story of Selfa Omulisia and Lorna Kimutai, the women behind Kakamega Hill Primary School. I began by asking Selfa, how did she venture into the start of this institution way back in 1998? I started from a very humble uh, ground by going round to collect children from their village or from the estates to come and form a, a school. So I didn't mind about a, a payment fees, but I could just use my own uh, uh, funds to make sure that we continue. And that's when uh, after one year, I think the parents saw the type of work that I was doing and they were encouraged. So after one year, they told me to start a primary because I ended the, the year having 64 children. And the parents refused that I have to continue with the children, so I started the uh, standard one those days I from the same place of course it was a rental place opposite GK prison in Amalemba so by and by now parents got uh, more children for me and they were paying some little money to make me to keep me running the school And from there, I also got uh, a friend who was, owning, uh, who was owning this land where we are, and he advised me to buy. He was a friend of mine who comes from Nairobi, still in Nairobi, and he advised me. And that time, remember, I didn't have any funds, so I decided to go and uh, visit the... Backless Bank, which is APSA today. And those people were very good. They came, they saw where I wanted to, to, to buy, and they also saw my school. So they encouraged me. By that time, they gave me some uh, 500,000. I bought two plots. But lucky enough, the whole plot where we are belonged to one person, and the person was also very good. So he also backed me up and encouraged me to continue buying since he was also having challenges of fees. The children were in abroad. So I continued like that until where I am. As you'd imagine, starting a business venture and scaling it to the heights that Kakamega Hill Primary School now is at is quite a capital intensive undertaking. So I asked Selfa, how did she go about mobilizing capital to be able to get the school to the level it is right now. Absa really helped me because I could go there, I tell them I want to start making sections. Remember, I did not start on uh, flats like these ones. I just made sections, wooden sections, when I was migrating to come here. Because now also my friends there wanted to use their place and the school was expanding. So I decided to make sections of uh, off cards and whatever, I came, placed them, I did some uh, concrete flow, and that was it. I continued like that. And the money that APSA were uh, assisting me that time, I embarked on buying uh, uh, space so that I can expand the school. Since this is town, and it was very hard to, to get space. I knew Barclays because uh, when I started, the little money uh, the parents could give me could pay as fees. I knew that I could not keep in my house. So that was the next bank, which was near my working place. So I could run, go to deposit the little I have, and then by and by, 
You know, when you go there, they want to interact with you. They ask where the money is coming from, what you are doing. So I used to explain myself. And then one day they said they will come to visit me. So they came and visited me. And they tried to advise me, if you want to grow, why can't you do this, do this, do this? And as they were advising me, I saw the need of expanding. That is, they told me, you can come, we give you a facility, and then you go and uh, buy somewhere so that you expand your school. And that is how I knew one another. We knew one another. Once they give you the facility, they make a follow-up. You have to make sure that the money, the, the money is being used on what you wanted. And they continue guiding you and they tell you, first of all, don't just use the money, don't just use the fees. When it comes, you know, initially before they advised me, I used to say, if I want to buy something, I just get money, go and buy. So they told me, no, first of all, you keep the record, bring the money to the bank we keep for you. After that, we will now, uh, when you want to do something, again, you come, you come and take. That one will make you now, will make your books to be good in a relationship with APSA, with Barclays that time. Um, but it was the nearest bank. I could not get time since I was a classroom teacher. Remember when I started, I, I only had two people. One to prepare meals in the kitchen and another one to assist me in case I go out, she can remain there. So I'm happy we continued until we got other teachers to continue helping us as per the number of the children. Right now we are having around 2,000 children right away from ECD to class 8. Uh, we have uh, 700 in body and others are day scholars. And we have got 11 buses which go to ferry children from their destinations. So we go as far as uh, Mahoho, we go as far as Makunga, very far to get them because parents want their children to join our school. And therefore, uh, uh, with the teachers, what we have done after buying the place, I now uh, started building. And because I was being limited, that's how I started building flats. So on those buildings you can see, I decided to put classes only. I was very careful because I knew that I was in town. So I put so many streams and I employed the teachers. Of course, teachers are there when they, and also they would like to be associated with a, a good school. So when they come, they work very hard. We have almost uh, 150 and above teachers, teachers alone. So we make sure that a teacher does not teach more than two subjects. If it is more, then it will be three. So you give them what they can manage. And also you make sure that they compete against themselves after they complete the syllabus. First of all, we have to complete the syllabus. After you complete is when you now go to see where you can touch that they did not understand and that gives us uh, a smooth running of the school. I really wanted to nurture children to be better, uh, better citizens uh, in future, and I'm very happy from that time. I've seen so many becoming lawyers, Others are doctors and they come here, some of them whom I have forgotten, they say, Madam Director, I was a student here and even I have tried to employ some who land here. So I wanted to nurture them to be 
a good citizen uh, of Kenya uh, so that they make the government grow. And when the teachers come, we show them what to do. Every institution has its own uh, way of teaching. So as we wake up, we prepare the children, we pray, and then we go to class. First thing, we must uh, cover the syllabus. We cover the syllabus after covering is when uh, now we tell teachers to revisit the places where the children didn't understand properly or the technical topics. That is how we, we manage to, uh, to perform very well. With 23 years active in the business of education and dealing with formal financial services, I asked Selfa um, what advice does she have for persons and especially women venturing into business? Uh, <laughs> there is one manager who was in Barclays Bank and he told me that if you keep, if you fear alone, then you will not uh, prosper because alone will always make you uh, alert. When you think about how you are going to pay, you will be alert. Uh, so they told me, they advised me not to fear. And for me, I will never fear loans because that is the only way to go and it can help you grow. Business to Define takes a short break. We shall be back with a lot more on the story of Kakamega Hill Primary School and how the education sector is coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome back to this edition of Business to Define in our continuing coverage of women in enterprise where we are focusing on the story of Kakamega Hill Primary School and the two women behind it, that is Salfa Omonesia and Nona Kimutai. I began the second part by asking Nona Kimutai, how did the school adapt to the realities of COVID-19, how much was the business disrupted, and what are some of the measures they are putting in place to ensure they are future-proof? Oh, it was a major blow. The learning was disrupted for a, more than a year, I can say that. There were no sources of finance because now children were at home, no fee payment, nothing. It came at a time when uh, the new curriculum was being implemented, that is CBC. So during that transition, we needed to focus, but now the COVID, the pandemic hit. So you see it disrupted that, that transition of the curriculum. We are following the health protocols that were stipulated. There is uh, hand washing. As you can see in the whole institution, we have hand washing points at every critical places, strategic places. Using of masks, we thank our parents so much because they are always cooperative. They give all the learners masks that they are supposed to use. Like day scholars, they normally come with two masks. And then our boarders, they come with packets of masks. And then we, so we are so grateful to our parents. Yeah. And then in school, our teachers are helping our kids not to crowd. You know, these are kids, so they have to tell them, don't crowd, don't do this. So we are also keeping that distance a little bit, though you can't achieve that. Yeah. There are those parents who had paid some little fee, so we used that to maybe to fund the operations. But as time went by, now that there was nothing called fee collection, ABSA came in, our manager came, told us they had this offer of funding institutions so that they can facilitate the, the employees. So they gave us a facility that enabled us to facilitate employees for some few months. Then it was it. The education sector has been severely disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic and many institutions are now having to have a hybrid model where they have 
online learning as well as physical learning. So I asked the ladies behind this institution, what do they see as the way forward and the outlook, growth prospects for the institution? First, we're doing a transition block, transition block that will be used by the junior secondary. You see, with the 100% transition, as stipulated by the Minister, Ministry of Education, we need to plan for the same. So we've started the block for junior secondary. And then we're planning to at least have uh, online books. Our parents are really struggling to get books buying books like in a in a class they can buy even even 15 books because the subjects are becoming many learning areas have expounded so to cap that we are planning to have online books where all our learners will access their books from there and with the new library in mind we're also planning to have a new library block where search will be incorporated we'll have the physical books and the online books oh we're also planning to integrate to perfect our integration of our curriculum so that there is virtual with our infrastructure we are trying to improve the infrastructure for ICT and so that they, we integrate the two, the physical learning and the virtual learning, so that in case there is uh, such a situation coming up, we don't, we don't go at a loss. Majorly, we use our halls for examinations during the national examinations. Then we use them for co-curricular activities. Children can play for indoor games. Uh, it can be used for meetings when we have our school meetings. But besides that, when the schools are closed, we hire them. Like the county can be in need of a hall, a big hall with modern infrastructure the Wi-Fi we have there, Wi-Fi. So we hire them out that can help us to get extra funding. Uh, Co-curricular activities is a wide range of activities that we do in this school. You know, we have children, all learners of different ages. So like for the pre-primary ones, they majorly enjoy bouncing on the castle, they swing around, they play with so many things that you see and others are not here. They run the tires depending on the weather. And the primary learners, majorly they do football, we even have Interclasses competitions whereby the winning classes are given some motivation with the concerned teachers as they are facilitated from the office. Uh, there is fashion show, most kids like that. Uh, indoor games, they do drama. Yeah. To the women, I want to encourage them to. Uh, continue uh, with their businesses. They start small and I know by and by they grow. But to the government I would uh, propose that uh, like for example at uh, my business which is the school I would request that whatever they are doing to the public like now if they are uh, they are uh, sending their books, if they can also assist us in that manner so that our parents don't suffer very much. Point two, I would also want to say that we, uh, we in private sector, we work extremely uh, uh, hard. And when we produce marks, 
let's say our children reach the going of form one selection let them just be taken as any other child to encourage our parents also because they are straining very much uh, to pay school fees but for my fellow women who are having other uh, uh, types of business i encourage them that they go they continue in fact uh, that is the uh, the way i have gone to make myself the way i am so they should not fear loans let them continue they go and take what they can manage and then from there after they repay they will still come and remember those people are very friendly they continue coming to visit you once you know once you uh, they know where you are they continue coming to visit you and helping you to plan so that you can succeed and they also like absa they will help them by giving them uh, maybe uh, pieces of advice because they have meetings which they will invite you uh, invite them they go there and then uh, they uh, they nurture them how on how to start the businesses and continue well and that takes us to the close of our edition on business redefined where we have been looking at the education sector through the lens of Kakamega Hill Primary School a fantastic story of Selfa Omolisia and Lona Kimutai shedding insights into how they are navigating the challenges and opportunities in the space stating to business redefined for more programming on such thematic issues